Welcome to the season one finale of Truth Seekers, where His Grace Bishop Emilianos of Maloa will answer questions sent in by the youth with a member of the youth. Hello, Sarah. I've got one more question for you. What do Christians believe happens after death? What do you think? Well, atheists, they just assume that we fall asleep and there's no consequences with how we live our life. But Christians believe that we live this life for the next life. St. Ambrose of Optina says the purpose of our life is to prepare for death. And I'm not 100% sure of what happens during the process of being led to be judged by Christ. But from reading St. Theodora and her experiences of going through toll houses, um, the ultimate destination by the end is being judged by Christ and that will just, I guess, determine whether if you go worthy of his kingdom or if you go to hell. But I guess the manner in which we live our life is really important because if we live a life of repentance and we truly try to be with Christ, then the process of, I guess, lead coming to Christ, going through the toll houses will not be as, I guess, difficult for people who have led sinful lives. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that ultimately there's life after death, and that is what we live for, that's what we prepare for in this life. We don't live for this life, we don't live like recklessly in this life, we prepare for the next life. Yes, of course, we, we prepare for the next life from this life. And uh, the saints, they have different um, not different views, but different experiences of what next life will be like. There was a story that someone was praying to find out how next life would be like. And um, he had a vision. An angel guided him in a big room where it was a dining table and everybody was around. There were so many nice um, things to it. But everyone was sad because the spoons they were given, they were so big that they couldn't use them to bring the food towards their mouth to eat. And the angel who was guiding the person that had the vision told him this is what hell is. To see, to see um, joy and not to be able to absorb it. And then the question arises, so what is heaven? So the angel got him in a similar room. The scenario was the same, but the difference was that people in the room who were sitting around the table, they were using their spoons to feed the one person sitting next to them. So everybody was happy. The meaning was that heaven is a place where you can enjoy what you see, like you can absorb God's grace and love. But the, the thing here is that you do through your brother. And this might not be the case in next life because in next life you do everything through Christ, through God. But this is the tool to get to the next life. And there is a next life. Um, there are all sorts of experiences that the saints talk about, about next life. One of the saints said once that if we do not experience heaven, if we do not experience God from this life, we will not experience experience Him in next life either. And this is hard for someone to understand or accept. But the meaning behind it is that we can experience the next life even while we're in this life. This is the experiences that all the saints talk about when when they feel God, when they, when they see God, um, it, don't, it doesn't necessarily happen with the material eyes, but it's still the, the vision of God. It's still um, the feeling that you're in God's hands or that um, God is there or that uh, you're dipped in the eternal life or all sort of things that all the saints describe. And that's where prayer comes handy and where self-emptying comes handy because if we don't have these two we can't approach God and we can't experience life 
we can't experience the real life, which is the eternal life, and we will not enter the eternal life. So, what I would say is that for a true Christian, there is no death. The one who believes in me will go through death into life, said Christ. This is why all the ascetics, they were looking forward to the time of their death because this would have been the time that they would start living properly with their Creator and there is nothing greater than that. This is what next life is. And if we are afraid of death, it indicates that we're not ready. But at the same time, how can we ever be ready if we are humans and we always make mistakes? So we need to realize that once we do what we can, and once we pray as we could, then we should rely on God's mercy, and then we are ready. And God will take us at the best point in our lives, will not take us when we're not ready. But we need to believe in Him, we need to trust Him, we need to love Him, and then He will take us at the best point of our lives. And this gives us the strength not to be afraid of death. And death doesn't really exist. There is, there is, there is no death. Death is like um, falling asleep and you wake up in a different dimension, which is with God. So there is no death. But the important thing is to know that from this life, we established the connection with God to conquer death. I've I really love what you said, your grace is really spiritually enlightening, especially that quote, the specific quote I remember a while ago I read, God will take us at the time that we are ready and it just shows how loving and merciful God is. That's right. Because when people think of being judged by God, they get scared that He's just a just God, but we have to remember and believe in His mercy and exactly. we have to remember He is loving. Exactly, exactly. And when, when God gives us a chance of experiencing Him, I guess this is the time that all the saints, they were sort of asking Him to take them away from this life. Because like Saint Seraphim of Saraf, He passed away while He was praying. So basically, He was connected with God and He stayed connected but his soul departed his body and stayed up there in heaven. And for such people, there is no judgment. Mm -hmm. They go straight, str they, they were connected with God, they just stay connected with God. Yeah. Thank you for coming today here, Sarah. Thank, Thank you. you, Your Grace.